Welcome to our Lenten Reflection. We begin the sixth week of Lent. As we go along looking at the Stations of the Cross week by week, we make it now to the 11th and 12th Stations of the 14. There is a prayer that goes with the Stations of the Cross. This is it, its response. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. The leader would announce the station, the eleventh station. Jesus knelt to the cross. They would say, We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. Sometimes they kneel down as they say that and then stand back up you may go do the stations of the cross somewhere this year in holy week if you do you'll notice that at each station people will bow their head or they'll kneel down or they'll genuflect which is going down on your right knee and then coming back up it's a gesture of reverence some people are quite uncomfortable looking at jesus get crucified there are crosses in most Catholic churches, and some people are uncomfortable that, that it's up there. And it should make us uncomfortable because God did this because of our sins. God let this happen to himself to be a sacrifice to save us from our sins. Our sins are that bad. Our sins can keep us out of heaven, keep us out of being with God forever. And so... Jesus wanted to fix the problem. He's like a doctor who has the way of stopping our sickness and stopping us from dying, giving us the uh, the remedy, the healing. This is the healing. It's hard to understand, isn't it? Hard to understand. The twelfth station where Jesus dies on the cross. Usually we come to a complete stop when we do the stations just have some silence just like it must have been quite silent from noon till three o'clock in the afternoon when jesus hung on the cross they say that everything became dark and and the sky became very very uh ghoulish looking and then a storm and then the earthquake came Uh, jesus dies on the cross he He's speaking to people and he's speaking up to his Father in heaven. And then he says, it is finished. And then Jesus um, dies. He loses his last breath and his head nods down. Some people have tried to paint this scene. uh, Very famous paintings. But when people look at it and they see how real it is, It brings tears to their eyes or sometimes horror, fear. Some people have made movies of this scene. I've been to plays, dramas, where they've done this scene. I've been a part of a drama team. It's always interesting to to try to depict the scene of the crucifixion and who would be on the cross and and the, the, the big nails and the making of a loud sound as if we're putting the nails into the person. And they scream out really loudly. When we've shown plays, people almost gasp when they hear it. And they realize it really happened to Jesus. Up on the top of the cross, I-N-R-I means uh, Jesus, King of the Jews. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because Because by by your your holy cross cross, you you have have redeemed redeemed the the world. world. Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Boys and girls, we are on page 261. Hosanna! Yes, and our faith focus, what does the church remember and celebrate on the Sunday that begins Holy Week? We just remember that Jesus was coming to his friend's house in Bethany, visiting with them, but on his way to Jerusalem. It'd be the real dramatic trip up to Jerusalem. It'd be the the end of his earthly life. He would die on the cross when he goes up there. 
But there was a parade. It was a welcome of all of his friends around him with palm branches and cloaks and songs and the singing this special word here. And let's get into it. And by the way, parents and boys and girls, this lesson is going to be Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday and Good Friday, all three of them in one. You can stop it if you want and wait till Thursday and Friday to, to see the next parts. But if you want to do all three in a row, you're welcome to do it. Hosanna. Let's read together, and I'll read it out loud for you. When you have a birthday party, you need to prepare for it in many ways. You have to decide on a time to have the party and who to invite. Will a cake be baked or ordered? Once, when it was time to celebrate Passover, Jesus sent his disciples to Jerusalem to prepare for the celebration. They went to Jerusalem ahead of Jesus and made all the preparations. Today, on Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, we gather near the entrance of the church to prepare for our celebration. We are given palm branches to use in the celebration. The priest wearing red vestments and the all other ministers join us. The palm branches are blessed. Holding them in our hands, we walk in procession into the church while singing, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week. It is the day on which the church celebrates Jesus' entry into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Our celebration of Palm Sunday prepares us for our celebration of the Easter Tridium, the last three days of Holy Week. On the next page, our activity is called Giving Praise to God. Yeah, and usually the ministers, the, or the music ministers or the priest himself, will lead a people of singing in into the church with this and holding the palms. Or you can already be in church, but they have a procession and people wave the palms. And then there's a gospel, and there's two gospels on Palm Sunday, just to get us all started. One is, one's after this song here. So how does this song go? Your parents may know it. It's the same song that's been sung for a few hundred years. All glory, laud, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the king of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our king and blessed one. And then it goes along with the other uh, choruses and, and verses. And it's a happy time, really. Uh, that We have to get all these palms sent to the church. from all of, All the churches have to order them. We don't have palm trees growing around here in the backyard, so we have to order them from places that have palms. And they send them to us the week of, of Palm Sunday. And then we get them ready for you to take them uh, and hold them in the service and bring them home and usually put them on the crucifix in your, in your house. Now, we're going to go to Holy Thursday, part of the Triduum. Triduum meaning three parts of a Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and an Easter. And so if you'd like to keep going, you can, or stop the tape, watch this on Thursday, okay? But we're on page 263. Talk about Holy Thursday. What do we remember on Holy Thursday, okay? So I know as a priest, I, I have to get things ready for uh, a Mass at night and that we have special readings, and it's really, in a sense, the, the anniversary of, of, of the first Mass. So the picture there and the, and the page is the first Mass. And 
Uh, often there's a foot washing at a Holy Thursday, not always, but and then at the end of Holy Thursday Mass, we uh, we have a procession that goes usually downstairs into our hall, and there's a place that people kind of gather around, and the Holy Communion is kept there, and then it stays there till Good Friday, uh, and everything goes quiet uh, until the Good Friday. A liturgy, and it's day one of the Triduum. Holy Thursday. Let's read it together. I'll read it out loud. We all have favorite memories of events and celebrations. Triduum is a word the church uses for the last three days of Holy Week. The three celebrations of the Triduum are Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. On Holy Thursday, we remember the last time Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. Together, they celebrated Passover. During the Passover meal, bread and wine were shared. When Jesus shared the bread and wine at the Last Supper, he gave it a new meaning. He took bread, said the blessing prayer, and broke the bread and said, This is my body, which will be given for you. After the meal, he shared the cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Jesus commanded the apostles to share this meal with one another. He said, do this in memory of me. The church follows Jesus's command each time we celebrate the Eucharist. On the next page, There's an activity, it's titled Holy Thursday. The words in the word bank are hidden in the puzzle, so circle them, and then use some of the words to write a sentence about Holy Thursday. So in the box, you can see the different words about Holy Thursday and what we just read. First, find those words in the letters there, And then from the words, write just a sentence of what you've learned about Holy Thursday and the words that you just found in the puzzle. Hmm. Right, and then we'll go to Good Friday and page 265. So this Friday is the sad day of the year. Jesus died on the cross. The faith focus, what does the church remember and celebrate on Good Friday? We celebrate Jesus, and he freely went to the cross because it was the way to bring mercy to the world, forgiveness of sins to people, and for somebody to take the sins away. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. We pray that in every Mass. But on on this particular day, we put a cross up in the church, And we ask people to to come up and make a reverence to the cross, you know. Uh, You know, it reminds me of another situation. Um, So there's a child growing up, and they don't remember it too well, but their older siblings do when their house caught on fire. And so uh, the, the, the the, the fire and rescue people showed up at their house, and they had to go in and go grab some people and save them. And... So what was really sad in this story is that the fire was really bad and the fireman was going in looking for someone. Um, he died in the fire. And so every, all the family got saved, though. And, but the, he, the fireman died of the smoke going into his lungs and couldn't breathe. Uh, well, that child grew up and said, you know, I think every year we should go to our old house or the place where it was and say a prayer of thanking the fireman. And then we'll go to the fire station or to the grave where the fireman was 
and thank him for coming into our house to save our lives. I think that the whole world, in a way, does that on Good Friday. At least all the believers in the world, the Christians, we say, Jesus, we're going to stop and just thank you. You came in the world to save us, and you did it. And we thank you, but you died on the cross for it. And that means a lot to us. So today, we remember. Celebrating the Lord's Passion. Let's read together, and I'll read it out loud. On Good Friday, we celebrate the passion and death of Jesus. No Mass is celebrated anywhere. Our celebration on Good Friday is made up of three parts. The Liturgy of the Word, the Veneration of the Cross, and Holy Communion. The priest begins with a prayer asking God to watch over us and make us holy. Next, we listen to the readings from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Then the Passion of Jesus is read from the Gospel according to John. Next, we join the priest in praying for the church and its leaders the people who are preparing for baptism, and for all people who need our prayers. After the liturgy of the word, the deacon or priest enters the church holding the cross up high. Three times he sings out loud, this is the wood of the cross, and we answer, come, let us worship. Then we are invited to walk up to the cross and show our reverence for it. Now the altar is prepared and we are invited to receive Holy Communion. When our celebration ends, we leave the church in silence and we thank God for his great love for us. The next page, they have an activity. We celebrate Good Friday. On the line under each sentence, write the part of the Good Friday liturgy it describes. So what you've learned, what we've read together, look at the words and then put it together on each sentence on what part the word is describing. And before we end here, just a reminder, if you haven't done it, or if you do it, Stations of the Cross on Good Friday is something most Catholics try and attend, and our parish offers them in the afternoon. Or you can pray the Stations of the Cross right there, either in your home. You can make stations in your backyard. You can walk them on Good Friday. And then also, veneration of the cross you can do that attend the mass and show your reverence for how jesus died on the cross and so if those are two things that maybe you haven't done in holy week it might be something this lent that you would like to do as we close we ponder the sacred wounds of christ here is a model of the crown of thorns that they pressed into Jesus's head. And here is a symbol, a replica of a nail similar to the one that was put in Jesus's hands and feet. Young people, the five glorious wounds of Christ that he would keep on his body after he died and rose again were on his hands or wrists as portrayed here and on his feet keeping them onto the cross as you see in the cross on our table and then the one in his side to his heart this depiction here has his sacred heart um, there's a song 
O Sacred Heart So Wounded. Uh, it's a beautiful song in Lent. And there are songs about the crown of thorns and about our Lord's suffering. Mary and John, the apostle, and some others watched him die on the cross. And Good Friday at the end of Lent is, is the culmination of all our prayers. Well, lastly, when Jesus rose from the dead, he showed his marks and wounds, especially up close to St. Thomas the Apostle. And he saw it, and now Jesus alive and risen. And he said five words, and I'd like it to make our closing prayer. He said, My Lord and my God. And so let's say that three times, okay, friends? And then we finish. My, my Lord, Lord and my, and my God. God. My, my Lord, Lord and my God. God. My, my Lord and my God. God. Peace to all of you. Thank you.